What's happening in China, and uh, what are expected impacts of those energy policies? Uh, and uh, uh, we are very pleased to invite uh, Mr. Li Junfeng uh, to join us and to give us the uh, uh, speech. And uh, before he starts, I uh, I'd like to give a very brief introduction of him. Mr. Li Junfeng is the director of National Center of Climate Change Strategy and International Cooperation. He was graduated from the Electrical uh, Engineering Department of Shandong University in 1922. Uh, actually, he has got the name of Father of Renewable Energies in China mainland. Uh, with a long time dedication to energy economy and energy environmental studies. He was in charge of articulating and drafting China's renewable energy law and China's medium to long term development plan for renewable energy development. The National Center uh, for Climate Change Strategy and International Cooperation, NCSC for short, uh, that uh, Mr. Lee serves is the national think tank for, uh, in climate change field. Um, they drafted the Chinese part for the China-US joint announcement last year and are working on the INDC now. Before joining NCSC, Dr. Uh, Mr. Lee worked for Chinese Renewable Industrial Association, Global Wind Energy Council, and the National Development Reform Commission, respectively. Uh, let's welcome Mr. Li Junfo to give us the presentation. Uh, thanks uh, for the end. Uh, kind of a long introduction for myself. Today, I, I do some topic uh, about uh, China. It's, uh, I mentioned that at the end, uh, renewable energy. Uh, I would like to give you several uh, topics and uh, why China need uh, renewable energy uh, and uh, what's going on uh, currently for China renewable energy. Also, I would like to say uh, what should be in the future. Uh, and also discussing uh, a lot of uh, kind of uncertainties. Uh, the, the uncertainties, there are too many reasons uh, I will, would like to discuss with you for such kind of issues. Number one is uh, why China need a, uh, why China need a, uh, renewable energy. Uh, as a as a uh, really to mention about that, the China is number one uh, for coal consumptions, also number one for energy consumptions, number one populations. Number one for emissions, everything is number one. That's a, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a, that's not, not a lot of thing. I think that if we go back to like uh, 1980s, nothing, only the population is number one, nothing is number one. <laughs> but, uh, after the 20, uh, after 30 years later, everything is number one. I think for the GDP, maybe five years, 10 years later, China is number one again. So uh, China is a, dominate the kind of energy trade in the world. Uh, since uh, uh, just the, before we have two kind of speakers from Germany, from Berlin, they talk about the coal issues. Is. But uh, without uh, China, coal is declining in China, in the world. From the 19, early the 1960s, during that time, the, the coal is more than 30%. If without China, coal is 19% currently. However, if plus China is 31 again, then all the, the energy analysis told the, the Chinese decision makers, coal become another major energy again. But it's not true. It's because of the kind of China dominating the market. Also, Lun Yang mentioned that last year, China to become the coal becoming Declined compared to 2016. That makes the trend of world CO2 emission get a decline. That's, that's the very important signals. So the China is a neat kind of energy revolution, not for himself, also uh, for the world. Currently, China is 
call it the domination, the ended consumptions, more than 66%, uh, and the rest is very little, even oil is only 17%. Most of the countries, the oil percentage is uh, 35 or 40%, China only 17 The gas is very limited. Only this time, last year, we over 5%, when normally in the rest of the country, more than 30%. But China need some energy revolutions. Not only for climate change, for GHG emissions, but for the kind of local pollutants, uh, especially for the air pollution issues. The last year, the APEC held a meeting in Beijing. Uh, the kind of uh, the APEC blue become the new normal world worldwide. Also, a little bit of surprise to me, our president, Xi Jinping, also used the word APEC blue. He wanted to keep the APEC blue. But if we keep the APEC blue in Beijing, but we need more clean energies. So we replace more coal, oil. We need to develop other kind of clean energies, including renewables. Uh, just as I said before, Lunya also mentioned that in a, uh, during the kind of APEC, uh, meeting last year, uh, the two presidents, <coughs> China and the USA, make the joint statement. Uh, I, I forget the USA was the debate for the announcement. I remember China, they China said it's uh, around 2030, China should be peak time for the, the GHG emissions. We should use the word around. Also the media, all the media, including the Chinese Xinhua New Jinsi and the, the, uh, the New York Times used to buy, but not really, it's a wrong. Around this means uh, either before or after, of course, okay. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a big, that's a big uh, debate. Uh, the only way discussion is that we, if we use buy or wrong, the founder of use wrong. In Chinese, we are uh, earning 30 yen to you. In English, it's uh, a wrong. Uh, 2030 is not the kind of uh, uh, buy. But we also make an announcement by this buy, the buy 2030, 20% of non-fossil fuels will be developed, or will be used. That's, that's a big kind of a commitment. When we uh, discuss for, for this one, a uh, lot of the kind of European people, American people, they argue with, uh, with me. They said, Lali, the your target is uh, too small. Uh, like uh, Europeans, uh, like uh, Germany, they already they said they are will reduce 40% of the GHG by 2030. Also, they want to have more than kind of 30% of the Europeans renewables. China only have 20%. Uh, I said, yes, we are the problem. However, when you calculation, uh, how big, how ambitious the target. Since uh, Germany, they by 2030, and the Europeans by 2030, they want to reduce more than 30% of their energy use compared with the 1990. But uh, we have a four times higher by 2030 of 1990. That's the problem. If China have uh, 20% of non fossil fuels, uh, by 2030, that means we almost, the total amount of the non-fossil fuels is three times higher than the Europeans, not Germany. This is the big target. So that's a, really we call the energy revolution. That's a, a big, even inside of China, it's a big debate. So currently, they, they want to have a learn uh, the kind of uh, international experience, especially for Germany, uh, Germany. they learn quite a lot. Uh, number one is they try to limit it, the energy consumptions. The Europeans is already uh, have a long term already to have this concept, have limitation for energy consumptions. It's the only country or country group that adopt this uh, kind of things. Not yet in the USA, but China has learned for that. We try to limit it to energy consumptions. 
but we don't know yet how to limit it. Uh, what's, the, what's the numbers for that? Recently, in inside of China, we debate for 19, for the kind of 13th function plan, what's the numbers? We, cook the, we need to cook the numbers by 2020 and 2030. What kind of any consumption numbers should be? That's highly related for the commitment around 2030, the peak time. And how much and why? That's very important for, for that. Another thing is that for the 20% of the non fossil fuels, also highly related for the total for the energy consumptions. So the, what kind of numbers that should be very important, that also a big debate inside of China. Another thing is kind of uh, focus on the kind of, uh, we call it, uh, pr produce more and kind of uh, clean energies, not coal. We are trying to not rely on too much on coal. Uh, but uh, it's hardly to do. Currently, we have 60, almost 70% of the energy depend on coal. Uh, we gradually to reduce the dependence, but how? Also, that's a very big uh, debate. Also, the highly related about this, to this topic of kind of a reform. The system reform, technical reform, is also very important. The currently, not currently, for long, quite a long time, China, in China, inside of China, the energy do not have a market. Even everybody said we have a market, but not true. Even recently, the, I think that's the last, uh, the, that's Monday, the last, uh, last Friday, last uh, NDIC to, oh, to public to kind of cancel government approval for pricing. But the oil, gas, and power is still there. So, so the, if the, the price to made by government, how uh, you call it kind of marketing, it's not marketing. So the marketing reform is also as an energy revolution. Without the kind of uh, system reform, so they hardly to do other changes. The last, next one is called the uh, technical innovations. Both kind of limitation of the energy consumption, also to increase in the clean energy, they need technical support. Uh, but uh, however, most of the Chinese technology are currently is uh, imported from other countries, like uh, the current our uh, premier Li Keqiang, when he was the West uh, premier in uh, 2010, he said when he met some uh, Siemens and other international guests, he said more than half of Chinese modern technology is brought by the joint ventures and the international companies. I said even more. Uh, so. For in the next kind of 10 to 15 years, if China to reach 20% of non-fossil fuels, also the limited energy consumption in order to, to reach the peak time of, uh, of GHG, we need a technical support. The final one is we, we call it also the kind of international cooperation. A lot of people they do not call it revolution. This is not, it's a really revolution. Usually, China try to keep this energy as independent from the world. Because the, but now they need, they need, need the world corporations, both for energy security, energy safety, energy technology cooperation, even energy policy issues. Uh, maybe you do not uh, uh, got this kind of signal, but for myself, as an old guy to research for energy for more than 30 years, I see the really kind of active signals. In the last June, when the high talk between US and China for what we call it kind of economic uh, high level dialogue, China agreed with the USA, said that they will open their numbers for all your kind of uh, uh, yeah, all your results. They are, they are, they are open for that, they were open for the world, how much they get oil they are, the reserve they will make. That means uh, China to open for every for energy policy for the uh, world. That make international cooperation also uh, 
which the Xi Jinping also mentioned, we use the kind of exclusive attitude for international cooperation. That means include the kind of fossil fuels and the non-fossil fuels. That's the end of the revolution. Let's talk about what, what's going on for, for China, renewable energies. Uh, you say, uh, just before my colleagues mentioned the world for renewable energy investment, energy activities, China has played a very important role. Uh, include kind of energy investment. And China takes one of a third of the renewable energy uh, investment. Even from a clean energy point of view, uh, after 2011, China's clean energy investment is already more than oil and coal. <laughs> Even the coal still dominate. But for the investment point of view, the clean energy is much more than uh, uh, coal and the oil. Uh, in the, the 2014, the total installation in China of the uh, uh, clean energy power generations is already 430 gigawatt. It takes about 30% of all the power installations. Even though China still have a big proportion of the coal, it's, uh, last year we have uh, 860 gigawatt of coal power generation. That's uh, equals almost all the, the kind of all the world of the coal installations, almost. So, I think from the share of the renewable energy, China is, uh, is uh, increased. In the, in the earlier, for the uh, 1980s, we are about 7%. Last year, we have already about 10% in the 10.3. But and this year, they want to have 11.4% of the kind of renewable energies. But there is still uh, with uh, very big uh, challenge. Uh, you say that this, the, the investment trade is similar like the worldwide. And in, uh, in uh, 2011 and 2012, it's the quite a bit. 2013, they get a little bit declined. 2014, they go back and then. In the last year, they trying to have uh, invest about like uh, $7.1 billion. It's also almost take one third of, of the world uh, uh, clean energy investment. Uh, the capacity is the high loss they the dominate. It, they have uh, uh, about the kind of uh, 300 gigawatt. Well, wind, they have uh, uh, the grid connected, the 96 gigawatt. But it is not capacity, they have more than 110 gigawatts uh, inside of China. Uh, also, they have uh, quite a big number of the PV, like my colleagues mentioned already, China has 28 gigawatts of solar PV installed. They're just behind Germany and the second largest in the world. I'm sure this year, China will be number one to be. Since uh, the government already, they said, uh, they have, should have been like 17 or 18 gigawatts of uh, PV to be installed. That means uh, almost uh, taking near half of the world uh, install, installation capacities over this year. Uh, for the kind of uh, uh, the end of uh, this year, uh, for, for the, the end of last year, the 19, uh, 2014, these numbers, I do not want to read that, that to them, but you can uh, go to this copy if you, you like the numbers. But everything is quite big. The new Added hydro is more than 20. New added the wind, more than 20. New added the PV is near 14 gigawatt. Also, there are some CSP and biomass. But everything that should be developed in China, inside of China. And also, China have a, a good policy instruments. This uh, this learned from Germany. <coughs> the, 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 it's a fitting tariff. They use that, that and uh, during the cook this kind of uh, policy, I uh, traveled to Germany several, several times, discussed almost everywhere, enterprises, government, research institutions, even the kind of the grid. We try to introduce this one uh, into China, but this, this policy is quite efficient uh, compared with the others that make Chinese 
TV and the wind in the biomass divide very quickly. Uh, also, there are a lot of the kind of uh, different kind of uh, policy instrument, but the most uh, important uh, policy instrument is uh, is the FTI, uh, uh, FIT. Uh, I think uh, we, we we need uh, to say two things. One of the um, current is the health budget plan, that means by end of this year, and what's going on by 2020, and what's going on by 20 by 2030. Uh, currently, there's a target like that. By the end of this year, uh, there's a 11.4 percent kind of uh, non fossil fuels. Uh, 2030 is 20 percent, but the 2020 is 15 percent. So, by the end of this year, we, we don't know yet uh, how much energy consumption is. But, uh, the target is like that. We should have uh, four billion tons of TCE, of the, the four billion tons of the TCE of energy consumption maybe end of this year. But uh, this is the projections. However, based on the kind of uh, Chinese statistics bureau, they opened the figures last year in the four four point two already. So we don't know how much of this year. So what that means. For finish of kind of to reach the target to eleven point four, it's not easy, since uh, we already increased uh, more than ten percent of the energy consumption by end of this year already. That's that's the big uh, numbers, but they have the target for that. The electric consumption is uh, six thousand hundred fifty terawatt hours. If we really reach this one or not. Since the uh, since the last since the kind of last uh, September until the first quarter of this year, the electricity consumption is decreasing due to the kind of a new normal of the economy. Usually, very fast of noise is declining the first week. So we don't know for the for this one uh, how, how how to reach the target. There's the uncertainties. Mm, uh, but uh, for the original target by the end of uh, 2020, uh, uh, by uh, 2015, we should have a 420 gigawatt of uh, of the kind of uh, hydro, 100 kind of uh, gigawatt of wind, 5 gigawatt from offshore, 35 gigawatt of PV, 1 gigawatt of uh, CSP, and a 13 gigawatt of biomass. However, I think hydro, maybe they couldn't finish the target. The problem is, uh, the, the problem is the kind of, uh, you know, the recently, the earthquake in Nepal, mm. it's a high, really, it's a high, big as an influence for hydro development in the, north, in the south and west of China. Also wind, we should increase, maybe we should more than 100 gigawatt. Since the last year we installed already 111, Kind of the 10 gigawatt already. Maybe another additional another 20 gigawatt this year should be installed. That means by the end of this year should be 130 gigawatt. Uh, the PV should be more than that kind of uh, 50 gigawatt. But CSP we don't know. Biomass is it's not changed yet. But, uh, we give some ideas for the. The next five years, what's going on? Since we have uh, all the non fossil fuels, 15%, the wind should be 200 gigawatt, the PV should be 100 gigawatt. So the sum of this CSP should be 1 to 3 gigawatt, biomass should be 30 gigawatt, hydro should be over 5 gigawatt, not 4, 4, uh, 4 500 gigawatt. Solar is okay, wind is okay. The CSP, we don't know. Since China, no one commercial operates yet for CSP. So if we really can do one or three gigawatt, we don't know. The biomass for power on, only we have 13 gigawatts. If in the next five years we can reach 30 gigawatt, we don't know. So that means if we keep non fossil fuels at a share of 15%, we need more wind and more PV. 
maybe most of people said maybe 250, like the, the, the already 150 gigawatt of wind, maybe 200 gigawatt of solar. We don't know yet. So there's uncertainties. Also, this cutting beyond the 2020, that's the, the buy, the kind of 2030, uh, the 20% of the non fossil fuels of, in the total energy use. There's a need of 500 gigawatt of hydro power, 200 nuclear power, 500 gigawatt of wind, five to 600 gigawatt of solar, even if last summer, some solar summer. But there are also big uncertainties. Number one, the hydro power. If we can reach 500 gigawatt or not, most people believe China maybe the maximum only 400 gigawatt. That means we shorted 100 kind of hydro. But nuclear, if we can reach 200 gigawatt or not, that's also big uncertainty. So we need to to make a kind of sure ensure to to finish the target of the, uh, by 2030, the 20%. That means we only can mix renewables like solar and wind ready. That means we may be by the 2030. Wind and solar plus them together to be more than 1,000 gigawatts, even more. Otherwise, we couldn't meet the target of the 20%. However, if we can limit it to energy consumption, then everything is changed, but we don't know. Uh, if we have uh, 6 billion by 2030, that's a random story. If we have only 5 billion by TCG, that's another story. So, uh, so we need uh, help, we need to kind of uh, get good comments from worldwide, uh, how China uh, to ensure the kind of limitation of energy consumptions, or ensure the kind of enough technical support, include the kind of energy internet technologies to improve our energy system. This is not only for China, but uh, also for the world. Thanks uh, for your uh, attention. Uh, thank you, Mr. Li. Uh, Mr. Li shared with us the reasons behind um, the energy revolution in China. It provides the uh, co-benefits of local clean air as well as the uh, uh, climate change mitigation. Uh, and then he also shared with us the, the latest achievements of renewable energy deployment in China, as well as the discussions on the 13th five-year uh, plan and uh, uh, the ideas beyond 2020. So thank you very much. <laughs>